What's your favorite character in a game? What is your favorite game? What is your favorite type of game? This is Rakino's Question of the Week. Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Rakino, your host to Rakino's Questions of the Week. I think I got it right. Anyway, if you're new here, every week we do a question, maybe a few different questions, and um, you just answer them in the comments if you want. Um, if you don't want to, that's fine. Leave a thumbs up if you like the video, thumbs down if you don't. Welcome back to the people that have been here before and watched. So this question of the week should be pretty simple. Um, <clears throat> it's really easy. I'm going to jump right to it. And it's, what's your favorite ga uh, gaming controller? So if you're a, a computer guy, you know, you can list maybe your favorite key. You could just say keyboard in the comments, or you can say a certain type of keyboard that you think is the best keyboard out there um or with the mouse i guess i'm not a really a pc type of guy so i don't really know the the ins and outs of the you know the keyboard but i got a list here this is from the shortlist.com this is a list of the controllers and the year and i'm gonna go ahead and post a picture on the screen and you're gonna see sorry i've been busy this week by the way <clears throat> i've been really busy uh doing the office cleaning up i had so i set up everything in the background and all that stuff but i had junk everywhere in here and i got a new computer desk in here um yeah just cleaning up tons and tons of stuff so i've been super busy so i haven't really done much videos this week this next week so starting tomorrow which will be monday i'll be getting probably about three videos out but anyway back to what we were talking about Controllers, the shortlist.com. I'm going to leave it in the description, the link to the website, if you want to go ahead and check a look, take a look at them yourself. Uh, I will post pictures here on the screen for you so you guys can see what I'm talking about, what type of controller it is. <clears throat> but we're going to jump into the consoles, uh, the console different controllers, and when they were released. This is a really good website, by the way, that has the list of the controllers, or uh, yeah, when they were came out. So you have the uh, Magnavox, Magnavox Odyssey 100. It was out in 1972. Um, so weird. I don't really know if it doesn't look like a controller, but I guess you maybe have a little dial on the thing. I don't know. That's the first one. The next one is the Magnavox Odyssey Shooting Gallery. It's a literally basically a gun. So some of these are like controllers that are the guns and stuff like that. So take a look at that one. Excuse me. I don't know if you heard that burp. Woo! The Atari Home Pong console, 1975, is when it was released, and it literally is just that box with the two little the two little things. You have the Atari button there, and uh, let me know what you think about that. We're gonna move on to the Fairchild Channel F, and it came out in 1976. Uh, this is like kind of an old school. So I thought maybe the Nintendo Switch was one of the first um, ones to come out with like two hand things, but it looks like this might have that same type of, you know, but older and can't do as much. Two little handles for your thing for controlling. I believe that is what that is for. Correct me if I'm wrong. If there's a lot of old gamers that are watching this. Let me know. I don't really know. I have I wasn't around back in 1976 that's a long time ago uh next one is the coleco if i'm saying that right coleco telstar arcade in 1977 this looked like a <laughs> it looks like it has a steering wheel on one side it's kind of a neat idea it's like a try it's like a triangle where each side has a different capabilities one has the gun so it's kind of a neat it's like an I guess a take home arcade, but it has the different things. There's a driving wheel, you have the gun on the one side. Pretty neat looking uh, controller for take home arcade, I guess. Then you have the RCA Studio 2 in 1977. It looks like a keyboard, it looks like two phone dials on each side and a speaker in the middle. That's what it looks like. Um, yeah. So it says, for this one, it says, while other second generation consoles were trying new and bold things with their controller designs, the RCA Studio 2 looked to have taken something of a back, backward step. The console housed two number pads, see number pads, that gained different control functions for each of the five inbuilt games. Uh, so there's only like five inbuilt games. Um, 
some of which used the numbers layout as a directional pad. Uh, it was discontinued after two years. Why the new play PS4 isn't available in a similar 70s bathroom plastic hue is beyond us. So, yeah, it's kind of like a, they were trying to do with the keyboard what they did for the con the controller itself. But, yeah, it didn't last very long. The Atari 2600... And it was in built and it was made in 1977. This is the classic one that most people recognize. It's a joystick with a red button, and that is it. And you have the Atari 5200 Super System. It came out in 1982, and it looks like a num. It looks like a phone. It looks like a joystick with a number pad underneath of it. Same same sort of concept, I suppose. The Casio V P P V 1000. Came out in 1983, and it's a blue joystick with the red button on top. Now, that was smart whenever they added a red button on top of the joystick because, you know, makes sense. But then they also added the start and the select button to it with a little white, like, punch pad. I don't really know what that does. but Okay, now we're getting into our area. Well, at least my area. If you're younger than me, you probably, you might have played with it, but... Uh, older, the NES, the Nintendo Entertainment System, original controller, the NES. 1983 is when it came out. Of course, I wasn't born yet, but I definitely, my grandma ended up getting this system and I used to play on it all the time. So I was probably, it's, it had probably been out for like 10 years before I even started playing on it. It's a block with the start select, a arrow pad, and an A and a B button. Then you had also Sega came out right around the same time and I played on this a little bit not very much the uh, the Sega Master System in 1985 it came out and uh it was, looks like it has <clears throat> two different versions that you can buy one with just like the flat pad where you can like arrows and then I guess start in a like an A and B button basically but they called it a one and a two uh, and then the other one had like a little knob on top for like your joystick type type thing and then this is a big one that I do remember a lot of people getting is that, and a lot of people liked this one a lot was the Sega Genesis Mega Drive, which, you know, it was a step up. It had the A, B, and C button, and it had a start button and the arrow pads. Came out in 1988. <clears throat> and as you can see, it's here. But yeah, a lot of people might have really liked that controller. Then we got into the Commodore 64, and this reminds me of Al. Uh, a weird Al Yankovic song uh, all about the Benjamins. If you haven't listened to it, listen to it because it's, he starts singing about the... You think your Commodore 64 is really neato. What kind of chip you got in there? A Dorito? <laughs> it sounded so... It sounded horrible singing it, but... Anyway, it's a joystick with the shooter button on the back. Hey, great, great add-on, right? You have the button on top and you have a shooter on the, on the back. And that's pretty cool with the red button, of course, on the bottom. Uh, it was a joystick. So, yeah. Then we get into the Nintendo. Nintendo, I always found, was one of the consoles that changed up a lot. Each system changed up. They were innovative, and they tried to keep it different and tried to come up with new ways of doing things. So this, the Super Nintendo controller added more buttons. So you had the X, A, B, and Y buttons, um, and they were color-coded as well. You had to start, select, and you had the up left right down arrows <clears throat> um it wasn't much um much different from the original NES controller but it was definitely a step up in the right direction and then after this whenever the nintendo started getting crazy they started doing all different sorts of stuff with their controllers i always found nintendo had the best changes in their controllers you can leave me a comment if you think another company did but i think nintendo was was the best at changing at their controllers and trying to be innovative. Then you had a Sega Activator. Came out in 1993. Oh, by the way, the, the, the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, 1990 is when that came out. And then I was four, four years old. I was born in 1986. Um, don't let everybody know that. <laughs> uh, Sega Activator. 1993 now it i don't know what the heck this is what it, it looks 
looks like a halo or something you step in. Let me see. I'm going to read it for you. Long before the interactive days of the Wii or the Kinect, Sega launched their own get off the sofa controller. Ah, get off the controller or off the sofa. The vastly unsuccessful activator was designed for use with fighting games placed on the floor in front of and a safe different distance from your TV. Uh, players were to control their characters by punching and kicking through infrared beams inaccurate and costly it flopped so this thing did not last very long at all and literally um it's it's kind of like they were trying to go for the the connect i wonder how many people got like radiation cancer or something from <laughs> from from these lasers or whatever they said they were uh what did they say? The uh, infrared beams. Infra so you're cooking your your feet or whatever, your arms, <laughs> while playing with this thing. So 1993. All right, so then we get into the uh, Atari Jaguar, 1993. Now, I think Atari was still trying to hold on to their past and keep going. And you had this... It was... <laughs> you, you see what it looks like. The three buttons, pause, options button, and then you had a, a D-pad... A and then you had a number pad as well. They still wanted to keep that on there. They're like, no, man, we got to stick with that. So they should just got into computers because they really wanted to hold on to that. By that time, Nintendo 60, uh, Super Nintendo was already booming. Actually, Nintendo kicked off Nintendo's, like, everybody was going to console games. And they were all going to Nintendo at this time. Plus, they had all the great games. And Mario, you know, they had... Uh, the Mario Kart, the whole Mario series. Um, you had the Zeldas. There were so many things on Nintendo that came out that blew everything else out of the water. There were still some other games, so don't get me wrong. We're moving on to the Neo Geo CD that came out in 1994. <clears throat> Again, um, this is an, an expensive cons console yielded yielded an interesting controller if only for having a now familiar thumb hugging joystick that little thumb indent may uh makes all the difference after several hours of gaming so this one had that thumb the thumb um joystick which is huge in games now everybody uses it um then you had basically this is where the numbers or the the, the letters a, B, C, and D. He had the different color types. Started moving, started pivoting into a triangular pattern. Um, or, I mean, a, like a diamond. So the button up here, button here, and here. Instead of square, <clears throat> which is what... It still is kind of square, but they started shifting with that, at least. Then came PlayStation, the original PlayStation, Sony PlayStation controller... Uh, which some know as uh, PlayStation 1. 1994 controller. As you can see there, this is a really good controller, and they pretty much stuck with the sim the same or similar design, My plus the joysticks they've added on later. But a uh, really, really good controller. They had the slant for your hands. It, it felt much more comfortable. Um, yeah. And then it also had the... It was everything is corded so far. Then N64, Nintendo, here we go. Nintendo 64, 1996 came out with the three handles, which I I love this controller. It was amazing. And the fact that you can uh, plug in a, a uh, vibrating pack in the back, remember that? You could plug that in and it was rattling when you're doing stuff. And then they, they're the ones that created the best like joystick that actually, well, at least... Uh, it's like a six point joystick. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six point joystick where you can. It had better move movement in games. Um, they got a little weird and interesting. You had the yellow buttons up on top, and then you had the 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 A and B still there, which was neat and it was different. It took a little bit to get used to, but it wasn't too bad. And that, that controller to me was one of my favorites. One of my favorite controllers. Apple Bandai Pippin 
came out in 1995. Um, it looks alien. It looks like a boomerang. That's all I can say about that. And I remember, I actually do remember this a little bit because it has that rolling ball in the middle there. So for different games, you can roll, you know, the ball and it does different things in the game. Moving on. Then you had a Microsoft Sidewinder Forced Feedback Wheel. It was a racing one with the two pedals that you can use. Now, I always remember these ones, and I, I, I played with some of them, and they stink. The con holding the controller, first off, is super small. Oh, by the way, here's the NES. Here's the N original NES controller. Ah, So, I thought that was cool. I wore it for the specific, specific video. I'm sorry, I keep looking over, and I mean to look at the camera. Noob. <laughs> uh, Microsoft Sidewinder Force. So little, it was a tiny wheel, which thing, and then the, the base where you're trying to, like, where you had to, like, put it, the whole thing would move. You had to have, the, like, some sort of, like, you set it on the ground, and you had to turn, while, and it was just like this, like, I, anything that had a steering wheel like that back in the day, they stank. Moving on. And then you had the Sony PlayStation DualShock 1997 is when it came out. And this is when they added the the, the joysticks. Um, and I think they also added the rumble in there to the analog button. You push that in and it like made it uh, rumble, if I remember correctly. And we're going to move on. Sega Dreamcast. Dreamcast was very popular. Like The name was very popular. I think because it was a whole new system again like came back like um sega came back with this something finally like people were waiting for sega to do something that was like different and this one kind of came back a little bit after it was in 1998 to me that doesn't feel like very long ago but it was quite a while ago then you had the nintendo gamecube that came out in uh, 2001 i never got this system but and I didn't want to. I looked at the buttons and I was like, no, 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 no. You went from N64 to a GameCube. This this controller, you went two completely different controllers. Completely. And I did not like the fact that you had a joystick up here and a joystick down here. It was not, like catty corner. And I, the joysticks were off. They, they The D-pad was down here. Big no-no. Big no-no. And then your buttons just were weird. I don't know. And then you had the buttons in the back. There was too much going on of a change for me to want to swap. So that's when I went to... So I wanted to keep something that was similar to... I went from N64. That's when I started jumping into PlayStation. And I got really into PlayStation. After this, this is when Nintendo, in my opinion, kind of dropped off They a little bit. They like, I was like, that count console wasn't that great. Enough for me to switch over to PlayStation and love PlayStation and never go back. You had Microsoft's Fat Xbox. <laughs> That's what they call it on here. Fat. It, because it was a fat controller. And again, it had the three buttons up on the top. It had these two little tiny, I remember the black and the clear button. There's like a white and black button too. Then you had the same thing. The joysticks were catty corner. I couldn't, I don't like it. Don't like the catty corner Control. I don't even know how people played like that. My thumb doesn't even move that that, that high. <laughs> but anyway, not not my dealio. I know a lot of games you could use the bottom one as well as the top, like the same. You could do the same thing, but no, just it wasn't for me. So that's what that's what sold me on PlayStation. Just saying. Sorry, Xbox. I'm not saying that you're bad because there are some really awesome games. After you came out later on. Then you came out with the Nintendo Wave Bird in 2002. Which was a GameCube. It was another uh, type of controller. Similar. It had some other little attachment thing that you could put there. Moving on. Then Nintendo decided to get the Wiimo and Nanny, the, the Nunchuck. So you had the little handle with the like remote. It looked like a remote control. Uh, I was already in the Xbox or not Xbox, PlayStation, um, wasn't going wasn't gonna to switch over. That was in 2006 is when that controller came out. Then there was Microsoft Xbox 360S 2005 controller. That's when it started to look a little bit better. It was a little bit easier probably to reach that, that, that analog button that was there. Um, still wasn't switching over for me, though. 
Their controller, Xbox has been very consistent with their controllers, though. I, I give them props. They only, they've also removed that white and black buttons. That was the dumb buttons. I don't know why they even put those buttons on there. Um, it was too much. There's a Connect came out. I'm not going to get into that. Okay, I guess you can say your body is a good... Okay, for the sake of this video, we're going to add the Connect. Uh, we're going to add your, not the connect specifically, but we're going to add your body as a controller. So for the connect and also for the PlayStation, using your body for, you know, playing games, fighting, whatever, jumping. We'll use your body as one of the control, as one of your favorite controllers, if you'd like. Because then PlayStation, because the Connect came out in 2010, and then in 2012 you had the PlayStation Move, where you had the two like microphone-looking things, the balls on top. Okay, moving on. The Nintendo Wii U Game Pad. It was a controller that you had the camera on it, and you had it looked like a Game Boy, but it was a it was a console in its own. Moving on to Xbox One in 2013. Their controller's gotten way better. I think the Xbox One's controller was the best controller that they had. Super basic, super simple. The con the, the joystick was pretty much in your hand, like where you were normally, because down below is where you'd have the up and left and right and down button, uh, D-pad. So not too shabby there. Got way better. One of my favorites, probably to date, is the Sony PlayStation DualShock 4. In 2013 is when it came out. So the PlayStation 4 controller, the one that has that flat little thing on top, that was a neat addition that they used. It's like touch, you can move it or you can push it in. PlayStation really has a lot of unique things with their controllers. I feel like more than most, that they're like secretive things almost. Things that you can do that were a little bit more secret. Um, that you didn't know much about it. Actually, in some games, the sound actually comes out of the controller, and it will trip you up if you're playing something and it's supposed to be, like, trippy or something. Then your controller starts talking to you, and you're like, whoa, what's going on? So there are some really unique things that I've seen this controller do with, like, the vibrating, the sounds coming out of it. There's some games that was, like, a scary scene or something, and you'll hear, like, the you know, or something like that, and it's coming out of your controller, so it's right there, creepy, and it also picks up on your voice, if you, uh, on certain, like, certain things, you can, uh, certain games, at least I think it does, I could have sworn one of the games, it did that on me, so anyway, PlayStation 4 controller, pretty awesome, now you have this new the two new ones you have the xbox new uh xbox one elite controller that came out in 2015 so it's newer <clears throat> uh sort of five years old um it has that like the d-pad is like like beveled and it has like uh you know there's no arrows but it can go in any direction pretty much you also had your your normal uh your normal joysticks and stuff now granted xbox has gotten way better like i said and they also have some a little secrets in there as well that you may not know um but i don't and then this one also the controller had like a buttons on the back like i don't know really know what that does i never played really xbox that much i played it a little bit but yeah okay nintendo finally after forever they decided to find after the wii u which got was really successful uh, as well. It was pretty successful, but they, it's whenever their games dropped off and they got all into <clears throat> young kids' games. What they forget to remember, or what they forgot to remember, is that people that fell in love with Nintendo are now older. From the originals, all those people that you fell in love with, when I fell in love with the N64, I was like... This is they've gotten their, they've gotten rid of all the good games like they need to come back with games that are good classics or even more brutal I guess more a little bit adultish games um, because they were they were sticking to the crowd of kids which is fine but you need to have both I think you can have both which then they finally came out with with the Nintendo Switch 
two controllers. Nintendo Switch's controllers are pretty amazing the way they did it. I'm not going to say they're the best controller, but they're way up there because you can play with two of them like this. You can turn one over, either one, you can turn it over and you can play with it like a regular controller, but it's really small. They connect into the Switch itself, so you can play like this while you're watching the screen. Um, and you know they can they slide into a uh, they can slide into an actual controller as well. So if you don't like playing with the little one, you can slide it into an actual controller. And they actually make controllers specifically like regular controllers. Super awesome. They did a really good job. On top of that, you can use the controllers. They have they have uh, sensing in it. They have vibration in it. They have um, you can put them in like these boxes, these cardboard boxes that they came out with. There's so much you can do, and they really they really did a good job with the Nintendo Switch controllers. I think they've been the most innovative. But yeah, so that's the question of the week is what is your favorite controller that you've played with if i didn't list one that you do know of go ahead and put it in the comments tell me what your favorite controller is that you played with and then i also want to know leave me in the comments what you think of the two new system controllers that are coming out the playstation 5 dual sense coming out at the end of this year 2020 christmas i think that controller looks bad a It'll be interesting. It looks like they smoothed the triangle, circle, X, and square, which I also really like um, <clears throat> because it's shapes instead of letters. I think shapes are just easier to quickly distinguish the difference between or to memorize. Um, but otherwise, they didn't do too much different. It doesn't look like they did too, too much different. Then you had the new, the new uh, Xbox... Uh, controller that'll be coming out as well they don't show a picture on this list and it was a april was when it was updated so <clears throat> i don't know let me know in the comments um if you like the video give it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed yet please do and i will see you on the next week's question of the week with rakino later how many games have you played what's the scariest game you've ever played What's the most action-packed game you've ever played? What is the longest amount of time you've ever played a game? Wait a minute, are we actually in a game?